Okay, hello and welcome. I'm Travis McEwen, and I am the instructor for your CIS 236 course, Networking 1, at Whatcom Community College. So, uh, we are going to get into Lab 5 now, um, and do a little bit of a walkthrough for this. Uh, I'm going to be doing this blind as well, so uh, we can see what we can kind of go over, and I'll do my best to kind of explain um, any and all of the things as we go through. Now, um, <clears throat> looking through it, a lot of what we're having you, a lot of what I'm having you do um, in this lab five is similar to what you just did in lab four, um, where we're practicing going through setting up our basic configurations on our switches. Um, <clears throat> and then we're making sure that we have Telnet enabled. Um, we're setting up management IP addresses on our switches. Um, and then uh, the new thing that we're going to be configuring here is the router itself and kind of making sure that we understand a little bit about how that works. So we're going to go through, we're going to configure this, and then um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how the router is actually working and what it's actually doing um, and how we're actually sending traffic back and forth. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, first things first, we will start off on switch number one. And we're going to go through our basic configs again. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much in depth about them because I've already done a couple of videos talking about where our basic configs are. Um, but if at any point in time you have questions about, hey, what does this command do or how did you do this command? Uh, again, feel free to reach out at any point in time. So we're going to start off. We're going to set our host name to S1. We are going to set a um, our uh, privileged exec password. So we'll say enable secret class. And we'll go ahead and set our line password as well. So we'll say line VT1 or line con zero. And we'll say our password is Cisco. And we'll make sure that we log in to apply it. Then we'll uh, go into our set our banner message of the day or oops uh, you know what what we should do fast is underneath the line con zero make sure that step three prevent any unsolicited debug messages from showing up so we'll use the logging synchronous command then we'll go ahead and step three set our banner message of the day so we'll say banner motd and restricted access and then we are going to make sure that we disable unwanted dns lookups with the no ip domain dash lookup command so again that prevents fat fingering or um, accidentally mistyping something um, <clears throat> we're going to set our descriptions on our interfaces um, so we'll look at our ports real fast we have our FA01 is going to the PC, our G01 is going up to the router. So we'll go into int FA01, and we'll set our description to PC1. We'll go into int G01, we'll set our description to S2. Oops. Oops, if I type in description. So, um, let's just check, make sure that uh, we're getting everything going right. So, the switch is looking good. So far, um, so that's all good. So, all right. <clears throat> now, the one thing that we should change here is even though I said in the directions it's to S2, it's really not to S2, it's to R1. Um, so let's double check and make sure that that shows up just fine. And it does, so that's good to go. All right, so next thing that we want to do 
is we're going to encrypt our passwords as well. So we're going to go back one run level and we'll say service password dash encryption. And then we're also going to configure a username and password. So we're going to say username CIS 236 password class. And then we're going to also um, set our IP address um, on the switch as well. And I think that we want to set it up on the VLAN for Telnet access. So we're going to go into int VLAN 1 and we're going to say IP add 192.168.10.2 And then we'll place a no shut there to make sure that that port state is on. All right. Um, now, next thing I kind of did a one, two, skip a few. So let's go back to step nine and we're going to configure a default gateway <clears throat> as well. Um, so we're going to go back to global configuration mode and we're going to say IP default dash gateway 192.168.10.1. Now, I want to pause and talk about this command really quickly. So the default gateway command on a switch, remember a switch is a layer two device. So it only operates and knows what to do with MAC addresses. So it has no idea what to do with IP addresses in any way, shape and form. What the default gateway command does is it's utilized for uh, remote access. So if I telnet or SSH into this device, Remember, I have to use that IP address that I set on the switch or on the VLAN in order to telnet or SSH into it. Now, this only works, however, if the device that I'm attempting to connect into it has, is in the same network as I am. So in this case, our PC1 over here is at 192.168, say, 10. Uh, I think it was 10.50 is what I want to be. And our switch is at 192.168.10.1. Our gigabit ethernet interface up here is, um, sorry, 10.2 uh, is 168.10.1. Uh, we'll change that because that's supposed to be dot two. So our switch is at dot two and our gateway is at dot one there. Now our other network exists is over at 192.168.20.1 with its switch at 192.168.20.2 and its PC at 192.168.20.50. So right now, if this PC1 wanted to connect into switch one via Telnet or SSH, it could um, because they're on the same network. However, if PC2, let's say everything was green and I had full connectivity across the board, PC2 attempted to connect into the switch, it would fail because without the default gateway command, the switch doesn't know how to send traffic back to this PC2 over here. The traffic will go over to the switch, the switch will, uh, and it will attempt to connect up to it. The switch will then attempt to try and figure out how to send traffic back and it, it will see in the frame, it'll go, right, this came from 192.168.20. whatever network. Do I know where that exists? And the answer is going to be automatically, no, I don't, because I'm a switch. I, I don't understand what IP address is. I only know what MAC addresses are. So it will automatically drop it. What the default gateway command does is it says, right, before you drop that frame and... Uh, what you should do is if you don't know what to do with it, send it to me. So in this case, our default gateway for the switch is 192.168.10.1. It's the router. So if the traffic goes over to the switch, the switch goes, I don't know what to do with it, but I have a default gateway that says, if I don't know what to do with something, instead of dropping it, I send it up to the router. And so it will forward the frame up to the router 
the router will then look at it and go, right, do I know where the 192.168.20.0 network is? It checks its routing table. It goes, yes, I do. It's direct, that network is directly connected to me, and it forwards it back to the proper destination. So long and short is the default gateway command is used on switches if you want to have remote access from other external networks. So that's the key key phrase there. All right. So um, <clears throat> next thing that we want to do is uh, we also want to um, configure Telnet. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish setting up S1 real fast. Um, so we'll go into and we'll say line VTY 0 through 15. We'll set our password to Telnet. We'll log in. Um, and if I remember right, that should be about it for the switch. But let's check just to be safe. So switch one, all green check marks. So everything looks good. So let's go ahead and I'm going to do the kind of cheater version of getting switch two up and configured. So we'll say end and we'll take and show run. And again, I only recommend doing this if you feel comfortable already with your uh, basic configs and you don't feel like you need, you understand all the commands and what's going on. Um, otherwise, I recommend that you go back through this and redo it um, just to have some additional practice. So what I did is I copied the configuration and then I'm going to go through and make changes uh, to the configuration and I can just paste this into switch two. So remember, we want to change our host name to two, S2. Um, I have to change the password back to plain text because otherwise it will it'll have it as kind of a bad day. Um, it'll have as all this garbled information will be my password, which is not good. Uh, if you want to have access to the device. And then we'll make our changes to our descriptions. So that's the PC2. And this description gets to stay because it is still the router one. And then we're going to change our IPs as well. And we'll change the passwords as well. And remember our passwords for the VTY was Telnet. So if I did everything correctly, I should be able to copy it. Head over to our switch two here. Go into global configuration mode and paste all the configs in. And then if we do a show run, oops, just a show run, we should have everything that we need. And let's check our results. And everything in switch two should be good, except I do need to turn the port on for VLAN one. So that's a good thing to kind of double check. So we'll go back to switch two real fast. We'll go into global configuration mode into VLAN one and we'll enter in the no shutdown command and I'll turn that port on. All right. <clears throat> so we know all that is working. So now um, <clears throat> we're going to move into configuring uh, router one here. So <clears throat> working with the router is very similar to working with the switch in terms of our Cisco devices. So um, command line wise, they're all the exact same. Um, there's not much of a difference in, in a lot of the commands that we're using um, besides some of what the functionality is between the two devices. So where a switch operates at layer two, dealing with MAC addresses and forwarding things within LANs, a router works at layer three, deals with IP addresses, and it forwards things between uh, different networks. Um, so so sorry, I think I said the switch forwards things between LANs. It 
uh, it doesn't. It forwards things within a LAN um, is a better term for that. Um, so it only knows how to send things within a LAN. Um, a router is what is used to send traffic between LANs, so between different networks. Um, so getting into it, uh, our run levels are still the same. So we still have user exec mode, which is what I'm in. We can go into um, enable, so our privilege exec mode. We can look at our running configuration, which is very similar to what you would see um, with, a, with a switch. And we can go into our global configuration mode as well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start by configuring our ports on our devices. So um, we have two ports that we're utilizing in this. We have gigabit 01, which is going over to the PC1 side, and gigabit 02, which is going over to the PC2 side. And again, I've, I've labeled these for myself. What the IP addresses are going to be for each interface. So we'll go into int g01, so gigabit ethernet one, you can shorthand it, uh, and we'll apply our IP address on this interface. So we'll say IP address 192.168.10.1. We'll put our mask. And then with a router, as I mentioned in a prior uh, video, uh, our interfaces start in a administratively down state. Um, so we manually have to turn these ports on in order for the connection to actually go live. Um, so to do that, we enter in the no shutdown command and that will turn that interface on. So I can also go into the uh, G02 interface and we'll do the same command. And one of the cool things you can do is if your command is going to be similar between them, you can press up and down on the arrow key and it will call the prior command and you can just mouse over, uh, you know, scroll over with your arrow keys and modify the, the prior command how you need. So in this case, I only needed to change one number. Um, so it made sense to just page up. And then same thing, we're going to turn that port on. So everything should be working. Um, <clears throat> So now that we've got that configured, we're also going to, uh, let's check and see what else we kind of needed to do. Um, so we wanted to also set our PCs. So I needed to configure the PCs as well. So that was an important thing um, that I didn't do. So going up to the PCs, we're gonna go over to PC1. <clears throat> we're gonna go over to the IP address and we're gonna set our IPs of 182.168.10.50. Our mask is a slash 24, so it's 255.255.255.0. And we'll set our default gateway of 10.1. So remember, a default gateway is our doorway out of our network. If I don't set my default gateway, I don't know how to leave my network. My PC can only communicate within this LAN. So within um, just that little section right there. So the default gateway allows me to say, hey, another network exists, and if I want to get there, I send it up to the router, and the router will actually look at it and figure out how to send traffic back and forth. So when we're looking at this, the number of networks that I have in this topology is two. I have two networks that I can use here. I'm trying to grab it. There you go. So I have this 192.168.10.0 network and I have this 20.0 network. And so the router is what's allowing the intercommunication back and forth um, because it, it's the intermediary device. So I've got that set up. So default gateway though is very important for telling our PCs, hey, there's more than just your network and here's how you leave it. So same thing, we're gonna go over to this PC and we're gonna set up our IP address and our default gateway over there as well. So now that that's done, you can see in the completion, we've got it down to 
so everything looks good. I can go over to PC1 here, over to command prompt, and I can test pinging over to 20.50. Now, first error, uh, first one should time out, should fail, but the following ones should be successful, um, and that's due to ARP, where it has it takes a little bit of time for ARP to go through. Um, ARP is the address resolution protocol, so um, in order for my PC to build its table and figure out more information about where to go, it takes a minute, um, which is just roughly a little bit longer than that first ping um, for its time to live value. So now that, that works, I know I have connections back between these two areas. Well, so let's talk about how this traffic is actually working. So if I look at my router, and how my router actually knows how to send traffic back and forth. So we can enter in a command called show IP route. Now, what show IP route does is it shows what's, what's called a routing table. A routing table is all of the networks that my router knows about. Um, and you can see that uh, the way we read it is it has a couple different columns. So in this case, it has, say, like AC, and then it has 192.168.10.0 slash 24 connected to Gigabit Ethernet 01. So what this means is that that C means that it is a directly connected network. It means that my router is physically touching this network. The 192.168.10.0 slash 24 is what the network is and how big it is. So in this case, um, I'll, I'll, we'll be talking about subnetting soon, um, but essentially what this is talking about is it's saying that the that slash 24 basically means that this last zero is free and available for me to manipulate, um, but the first three octets, the 192, 168, and 10 are locked in place i can't touch them um, that's what that slash 24 means um, if that doesn't make sense that's okay just pretend there's a big red i believe button in front of you and hit it um, we'll get into this a little bit further in a later video and then uh, <clears throat> the last little bit there is the gigabit zero one and that's it saying that this network i know about this network because it exists on the opposite end or on my gigabit zero one interface. And then we have the L here, and you can see it says it's 10.1 32 on gigabit zero one. What this means is it's local. It means that this single IP address, just this one IP address exists on the gigabit ethernet zero one interface. So it's one IP address that is a part of the 10.0 24, it exists on the G01 interface, which is why I know that this network is physically connected. And the same thing for the 20.0 as well on gigabit 02. So how does traffic work? Well, when PC1, what I just did was I pinged PC2. What it does is it creates, it generates uh, information, it creates a frame uh, to send traffic over to the other PC. So if we look at, say, oops, um, let's pull up a whiteboard here. So if we look at, say, like a whiteboard, um, so I'm just going to use this to kind of help uh, draw a little bit and give a little bit of an idea of kind of what we're looking at. So when I when we have, say, our, our PC and it's attached to a switch, which is connected to a router, which is connected to another switch, which is connected to another PC. And on this network side, we had our 192, 168, 
20.50 IP address. And that interface was at 20.1. This interface was at 10.1. And this one was at 192.168.10.50. OK. So what happens when our PC1 here sends traffic over to PC2? What PC1 does, and this is just a simple uh, ping, is it builds what's known as a frame. Um, so what it will do is it, if I send a message such as, you know, just ping, and it can say the word ping or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, it sends that message. That message can't be sent as the in, uh, in its entirety. Um, it has to be broken up into different segments, and it has to be segmented up. And so each segment gets a little number, one, two, three, four. So it, it labels each individual chunk, and then it takes each chunk and creates a frame with it. And so what that frame looks like is it's divided up into multiple different sections. So we have the entirety of the frame, but then we have what's known as the trailer. Then we have the data section, which is the chunk that was sliced up. Then we have the layer four information, which gets lumped in with layer three, but I'll, I'll separate it out just to make it a little easier. And then we have our layer three and our layer two headers. Um, so really the one thing to just keep in mind here um, is layer three and layer two, or I sorry, layer three and layer four are essentially combined together in the in what the frame actually looks like. Um, and then, so really when we say uh, the layer three header, uh, it also has information related to layer four built into it as well. So um, layer three and layer four kind of combined in terms of the actual uh, frame itself. So what this is though, is our, that header information, what's inside of this is the datagram is the message of the ping. Um, but the layer three header contains information such as our source and destination IP address. So it will check its, the, our PC will check its own table and go, right, well, where am I trying to go? What's going on? So the destination comes from where I, I tried to ping. So it goes, right, what is my destination? Well, from the ping, I'm trying to reach out to 192, 168. 20.50 and my source is well myself so I'm gonna shorthand it and just say it's 10.50 but then it also has to build in its layer 2 information which is MAC address so it's it also has a source and a destination but for max and so a MAC address remember is a hard-coded uh, address that represents the physical network card itself. So in this case, I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just going to make it easy. And we're just going to say like PC one's Mac address is say AA. Now it is trying to go to a over to PC two over here, but we're also going to check and say, um, I'm going to give Mac addresses for the other interfaces of say G zero one. And we add G zero two so we'll give it cc and then dd so these are me very much shorthanding what the mac address is normally it's a 48 bit hexadecimal string um, i'm just shorthanding it to make it simple uh, for kind of writing it out so <clears throat> on the mac addresses it'll look at it and we'll go okay well where do i know how to go well layer two only works within its given LAN. So the furthest point that layer two knows how to get to is to the gigabit zero one interface. 
So from its perspective, from PC one's perspective of what I, what is the MAC address with this is the furthest MAC address, the furthest MAC address that it knows about that's inside its LAN is BB. So the source MAC address is itself of AA and the destination MAC address is the furthest point that it knows how to go to, which is BB. So the layer two MAC is different than what the destination IP address is. Now, this is important because what happens is once this frame is built, we're not even done. This, our message hasn't even left the PC. The frame has to be built. Once that's built, then our frame gets translated into binary. So a representation of ones and zeros. And then that binary gets translated, depending on how we're using this, in this case, we're using ethernet cable, gets translated into electrical impulses. I'm just gonna shorthand and say electrical signal. Now, how electrical signal works for sending this information is off of voltage over time. And it re is represented based off of just a one or a zero, where a spike in voltage is represented as a one and a drop in voltage is represented as a zero. So if I say I have one one, then it's held a one one is held for a certain period of time. A zero is then a drop in voltage. I have a one, a drop in voltage for the zero, a spike in voltage, and then a drop in voltage. So, so those electrical signals are what's actually getting sent across the wire. And then the switch will take that electrical signal retranslate it back into binary. So it'll retranslate it back into 11010111100, translate it back into the actual frame that we just described right there. And what it will do is it will read the source and destination MAC address, specifically the destination MAC address, and go, right, do I know where BB is? And in this case, we're going to assume, yes, it does. And it forwards out to our G01 interface. That frame then makes it, does the exact same thing. Once it knows where it's supposed to forward that message, it retranslates that the frame back into binary, back into electrical signals, um, and then sends it back out the interface going towards the next, uh, towards the next device, which is our router. Our router then takes it, does the exact same thing, translates it back into binary, back into the frame. And what it will do at this point in time is it will strip off the layer two header so that it can read the layer three header. So this is, gets us into kind of the encapsulation side of things of the each device when we're talking about it's encapsulated, it means that I can't look beyond what that first layer is unless I remove it. It's in the capsule. It's, it's kind of like those Russian tea dolls. You have to open one up in order to see what the next one is. Um, that's the same thing of what our frame works like is our router has to remove the layer two header in order to be able to view the layer three header, um, the source and destination IP address. So when it does that, it can it converts that frame into what's known as a packet. Um, so a, a packet is everything that's been encapsulated up to layer three. A frame is everything that's been encapsulated up to layer two. So it's a packet when it's inside of a router. It's a frame at every other point, um, essentially. So it'll read it. It'll look at its at the destination IP address, and it'll go, right, do I know where 192.168.20.50 is? And it'll go back to its routing table. 
And it'll go, well, I might not know where 20.50 is, but I do know about the 20 network. And because I know about the 20 network, I'm going to forward it out 0 2. And it actually probably does know about the 20.50 because it's physically attached to that network. Um, and so it has it built into its ARP. And we'll, we'll talk about ARP a little bit more as well. Um, but I think I have a video or two already on ARP. So after all of that repeats the process, makes it over to PC2, PC2 will do the exact same thing, but it will go, right, do I know what to do with this traffic? And it'll, it'll do the same thing of going, well, do I know where 10.50 is? Well, no, I don't because it's not on my same network. It's not on my same LAN. So in order for it to send that traffic back, it sends it out to its default gateway, which is in this case, CC. So, all right, that was a little bit longer of an explanation as, of what I was anticipating, but hopefully that kind of helps explain what's going on and what ping is kind of doing for us and how no, uh, a very simple explanation of what network is kind of working. Uh, I say simple, it might be simple, might be complicated, um, as always, feel free to reach out and ask me questions if you ever have them. All right. Have a good one.